uh, at the little table in the back. Um, this is a sign-in sheet. And, uh, you know, I've been really nervous for about three weeks, but I'm not right now because you all came. So I can relax. <laughs> and I want everybody's name on there because then I know who did it. Gave me the feeling of relaxation. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tivoli's historic Watts de Peister Hall, our beautiful village hall. This is the Tivoli Village Board of Trustees annual reorganizational meeting, long known in Tivoli as the Reorg. This is the annual meeting when the Village Board of Trustees, Susan's been to a lot of these, so. <laughs> when the Village Board of Trustees reasserts and reestablishes its policies and procedures. It is when appointed offices are filled, when appointments to various boards and committees are made. It is the annual restating of how we will operate and conduct business in the year to come. But the reorg cannot begin until the elected officials take their oaths of office. We have three elected officials who will all serve two-year terms. I'd like to ask the Honorable Howard F. Clark, Village Justice, to approach the podium and administer the oath of office for May. I and then you're going to state your name, and then I'm going to say discharge the office as office of my Yep. Uh, I. I, Joel Griffith. Do solemnly swear do, or affirm. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of mayor. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. Proceed to elected uh, tr um, trustees of the village board. Susan Ezrati will approach and take the oath of office for village trustee. <coughs> solemnly swear or affirm do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and the Constitution of the State of New York and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of trustee according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability congratulations of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. to our elected officials. Thank you, Justice Clark. He'll be back shortly. Now that the elect, uh, elected officials have been duly sworn, I hereby call to order the 2019 reorganizational meeting of the Village of Tivoli Board of Trustees. Will you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Appointed offices for which the 
terms of office have expired. These appointments are made by the mayor and are subject to the approval of the Board of Trustees. I have submitted to the trustees my nominations for the positions of clerk, two-year term, treasurer, deputy clerk, and acting justice, all with a one-year term. Uh, trustees, if you are comfortable approving all candidates together, we can do it with a single vote. Or if any trustee would like to vote for or against an individual nomination, we may take each candidate in a separate vote. Would we like to do one vote? Lump them. Lump them? Yes. Okay. We're going to lump them. In that case, is there a motion from the board to approve the appointments of Robin Bruno, village clerk, Bonnie Day, village treasurer, Laura Gale Tyler, deputy clerk, and Danielle Cordier, acting justice? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 These candidates have been appointed by the mayor and have the approval of the Village Board of Trustees. They shall now take their oaths and Justice Clark, if you would come back up after your nice little rest. <laughs> Robin Bruno, Village Clerk. Aye. Aye, Robin Bruno. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of, according to the best of my ability? Bonnie Day, Village Treasurer. Please approach the podium. Yeah. <laughs> I. I, Bonnie Day. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of village treasurer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of Deputy Cook. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Tonight, 
We will add four more names to the record of outstanding citizens who have generously given their time, expertise, talents, and heart to Tivoli. The first award is the 2019 Victory Award. Uh, the plaque down there, you know, most of them have a sort of little, this is what it's for, which I get to kind of stretch and scooch and this and that. So <laughs> sometimes it's a bullseye and sometimes it's not. But I didn't write those descriptions. So, um, But this one is a bullseye. For assistance and commitment to the village of Tivoli and our efforts to empower our youth. Tonight's recipient was last summer's director of the immensely successful 2018 Tivoli Recreation Camp. Over 40 children participated. They engaged in all manner of stimulating games and enriching activities at Memorial Park. They were welcomed by our friends at Kotzbahn on a field trip to see a ballet rehearsal. They enjoyed a weekly pizza party generously donated by the Harris Smith Post of the American Legion. Now in 16, we stopped the rec program for a summer to sort of get it together and make a new start. And in 2017, it was rebooted with 29 kids. Last summer, as I said, we had 40 plus kids. We also expanded the day from 9 to 12 in the first year to 9 to 2. Um, we're about to tell you about what we have for 2019 in just a moment, but I'm going to let this gentleman help me out. So for his great work on the Tivoli Rec Camp last year and this year coming, it is my great pleasure to present the 2019 Victory Award to Ari Spiceberger. Saturday. Um, we're all glad to be in the garden and it already is looking a lot better. 
Uh, she also serves on the village's zoning review committee, a citizens group tasked with working up zoning recommendations for the village board on everything from handkeeping to accessory apartments and short-term rentals. And uh, the ZRC is going to have a busy year this year for sure. Um, and last year, she made sure that Tivoli uh, still had its small but sweet spring cleanup day when we give out some trash bags and gloves and people walk the streets and pick up the trash and litter. Um, you know, I had done that for a number of years, and I'll tell you, I was getting kind of tired of it. And I was talking myself out of, like, you're busy, maybe you can take a year off. <laughs> but she's jumped in and made it happen anyway. And, you know, I'm grateful, and I'm sure everyone in the village noticed the litter getting picked up. So, um, she's wonderfully engaged in the myriad of activities. Uh, in Tivoli, and we are very grateful. The 2019 Angelo Stafira Award goes to Jackie Goss. Just real quick. 
James Starr Clark was awesome. James Starr Clark came here in uh, the early 1850s when Tivoli was known as Myersville after an earlier citizen. That was M Y E R S. But the place was such a disaster that they changed the name because they were, uh, it was Meyer with an, with an I at that point. And James Starr Clark opened the first uh, public school. And it was uh, for children, but uh, in the evenings he would run classes for the adults. And one of the things about Tivoli in the 1850s was that fishing was a very big deal. So in the summertime, everybody ate fish. And in the wintertime, they ate salted fish. And James Starr Clark um, sort of introduced the idea of home gardens to the people here. So he was really, he was sort of a reformer. And so he's bringing education. And he had partnered up with, uh, with uh, John Bard. Who, and uh, together they established the Trinity School up on North Road, mm -hmm. and um, he sort of realized that if Tivoli was going to like keep moving on this trajectory, they'd have to be able to levy taxes in order to um, improve the roads and have sidewalks, because in the wintertime, people would you know be just up to their knees in mud and snow and terrible. So uh, he was the driving force behind um, incorporating the village of Tivoli at the river and Madeline up here. and. Uh, you know, starting the ball rolling, and he was the first president of the village because back then there was no mayor, there was a president of the board of trustees. And um, if it weren't for James Star Clark, we would not be here as Tivolians. So uh, he's sort of, he's a really awesome guy. There's a photograph of him hanging in the mayor's office over the mantle that you can see through the hallway and stuff. We have it right above the statue of Wasta Peister, and of course, those guys didn't like to. Okay. Black hat, white hat. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Uh, the James Starr Clark Citizen of the Year, a community is only as great as those who give exemplary service. Now, sometimes village government will do something and residents will say, hey, that was good. <laughs> sometimes we will provide a service and they will say, thanks for doing that. Uh, and if comments like those are to be the measure of all the things the village government did last year, by far, the most appreciated thing in terms of resident feedback all year was last August's, and, um, I said annual, we're going to do it again, <laughs> Village Cleanup Day. I do not exaggerate when I tell you I had more thank yous, praise, and gratitude from residents for that service than anything else. Anything. I mean, I was like, in the, that snowstorm we had in March a few years ago, and we got all 27 inches, and we had the streets cleaned up by Friday for St. Patrick's Day. I got more thanks for the garbage stuff. <laughs> we got thanks for that. Uh, if you didn't know, the village hired a garbage company to come in and collect all the stuff we don't normally take throughout the year. Uh, this was a service that hadn't taken place in a very long time. Uh, residents had to pre-register for a small fee. We had over 50 households participate, and we hauled off over 12 tons of stuff. Um, clearing out yards, garages, basements, attics. Due to the extreme success of uh, Tivoli Cleanup Day, uh, we will certainly be doing it again this year, so watch out for that. But the only reason it happened at all, and thus the only reason we get to repeat it, is because of the vision, dedication, and determination of two citizens who wanted to see this happen, who helped me do it, and I got all the thank yous, as I told you. So here, before you all, I would like to say that every statement of appreciation I received duly and truly belongs to our 2019 James Starr Clark Citizens of the Year, Leslie and Glenn Baker. <laughs> Leslie and Glenn Baker, the Village of Tivoli recognizes your tremendous service in organizing the August uh, 2018 Village Cleanup Day. Your great idea, its thoughtful execution, resulted in an event truly useful and deeply appreciated by your fellow Timoleans. Please accept this recognition on behalf of a grateful village and a grateful mayor. I gotta tell you. <laughs> a relatively short time, but he has already made a deep and lasting impact on our community. From my first, first conversation with him, and in many since, 
I have been struck by his grasp of what matters. Now granted, dealing with what really matters is his vocation, but he's very good at his vocation. He also gets what matters in a strong community like Tivoli. He gets Tivoli on a deep level. Because some folks may not yet have had the pleasure of knowing him, I asked him uh, to come up and share a few words and thoughts uh, with us tonight about Tivoli and tell you a little bit about his work here. I had hoped to have him last year, but he is a very busy guy who travels almost constantly. I literally had to get this on his calendar about eight or ten months ago. So I'm so pleased he could be here with us tonight. Please welcome from St. Paul's and Trinity Parish, Father Masood Ibn Saydala. St. Paul's Trinity Parish was about to have its 200th anniversary. So you can imagine coming into a new parish, discovering that I was going to be responsible for putting on this huge event. So the first thing I had to do was not only learn about St. Paul's and Trinity Parish, but about Tivoli. <laughs> and to realize that since the parish was uh, formed in 1817, uh, and discovering uh, much of the history of the people here and who's buried in the cemetery. Are you aware of some of the people who are buried in the cemetery? Including the, the uh, family of, uh, of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, right? And others. And so it goes way back, the Livingstons and all of that. And so it was a matter of pulling all that together and uh, learning about the history and meeting the village historian. <laughs> <laughs> Villages and towns, it's always confusing. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and so that was my beginning here. And meeting the mayor, as well as the deputy mayor, and finding out that uh, one of the most important things here in Tivoli is is pulling everybody together. Uh, even in a small place, it's sometimes difficult because you have different groups that are working. Uh, but to find out that there was a real effort to uh, make sure that people were communicating and having opportunities to get together in a variety of uh, events. And so uh, when I met with them very early on, which was on a Tivoli day, and finding out that that was a fantastic experience and and seeing the mayor wet up all the kids. <laughs> Mercy. It was fun. I even have pictures of it. <laughs> so what did I ask him? What did I ask them? Do you remember what I asked you? I was soaking wet, I can't remember. You have <laughs> My question from our church as we were about to celebrate our two hundredth year was what can we do? How can we help support uh, the work of this village? How can we respond to the issues, the concerns that are here? Uh, as we approached our 200th anniversary, we were already, as a parish, beginning to think about that. And one of the major issues that uh, was on our mind was recognizing that within the whole country, there's been the opioid crisis and issues around addiction, and how it is that we could be uh, effective respond to the issues of, of people who are in recovery. Not only the people who are in recovery, but being of support to the families and friends and other people who are supporting them. And so that's one of the major issues that we have begun to address. And right here in this hall, uh, next month, I believe, the 17th of, uh, no, it's the 17th of May, I guess it is, uh, that we plan to do a joint uh, program with BARD, which has a health program. Uh, to uh, bring about a, a program that will begin to speak to some of the issues uh, to support people who are uh, in recovery and especially around the issue of alcohol uh, 
And so, uh, be aware that that is happening. So we've reached out in many ways to connect. Partnership is something that's very important to me. And I said to the mayor that we really want to partner with this village to be a support and a resource. Uh, often the church is, is seen in a very narrow way, but I want you to know that we are interested in all of the concerns of human beings and want to respond and want to be a part of your life. It's been a great uh, joy to me to serve as the uh, chaplain to the fire department and uh, rescue squad for about the past year and a half, I think now. And uh, that's been another way of learning about uh, the people and the heart of this place and to know that there are those people who really put their lives on the line and, and spend many hours uh, training uh, to be able to protect the people of this village and the surrounding area. Uh, Winterfest, this was a year that our choir had a chance to come and sing carols uh, at the Winterfest, and we hope to do that again. Invite us again, please. Here I am. You want to do it again? Okay, thank you. And as we approached Christmas, we were aware that at this point, we we're the only, only church in the village. And so we wanted to say to everyone, come. No matter who you are, what denomination you are, if you're of no denomination, come and enjoy the joy of that season. And so we advertised it as a community uh, candlelight service. And we say, come and uh, share whatever we have to offer in that regard. Um, just, a, what, a week or two ago, some of our people were involved and Tivoli has talent. And I heard that that was wild. <laughs> we couldn't be there because we were at the fireman's dinner uh, that night. It was such a, uh, it was so difficult being there that night, wasn't it? All the food, uh, mm, yeah, it was great. So if I had been calm, I would have been there. But Tivoli has talent but we do have several people of the parish who are involved with that. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we're wanting to be involved, we're wanting to be a resource, and we invite you to come and share in our life uh, so that it's not just our life and your life, but our life together. Thank you. have a chance to sort of meet Father Masood and I encourage you to, you know, chat with this guy. He's, he's a great person and uh, such a fitting addition to our village. Uh, he fits right in and it's great to have him here. Our next speaker um, is known to most of us and he has been here a long time. And even though that's true, he's actually a few years younger than me. Uh, you know, 36, 37, 38 years ago, he and I were little Tivoli boys riding the bus. We'd pick him up at Washburn, we'd go around Clay Hill, we'd pick him up, and we'd go to Mill Road. <laughs> it was a long ride. <laughs> um, but now, you know, almost four decades later, I happen to be the mayor, and he has returned for another stint as chief of the Tivoli Fire Department. Um, you all know that this village and its environs are served by the finest, most dedicated, and most committed fire company around. The Village Board and I support their work, and we are committed to making sure that those who are ready to sacrifice over and over and over again for our health and safety deserve all the support that the Village can give them. The Board will continue that commitment this year, as we have in recent years, and this year, the Tivoli Fire Company is planning a very big party. Here to tell you all about it, and whatever else he'd like, is <laughs> Chief Mark Hildenbrand. So, good evening everyone. Thank you again for Joel for inviting me. I think this is the first time the fire department's ever been invited to speak at one of the village meetings. Um, so I want to start with a brief introduction. I mean, like I said, I grew up here, a lot of you know me, a lot of you don't. I was born right here, raised in Tivoli, grew up on Clay Hill, um, alongside uh, Angel Sapiro. <laughs> I knew how to do it. Uh, my grandfather. Um, 
He pushed me to join the fire company that I did when I was 18. So, the past 25 years, basically held every position from lieutenant to chief. Um, my third go around, ninth year. My wife wasn't too pleased about this one, but um, I did. Uh, so again, my family's been involved with the company for many years. My grandmother helped establish the rescue squad. My grandfather, 46 years. My father, 38. I married into it, so it's a family thing. Uh, like many members of the department, we either grew up in the firehouse or one of our family members did. Um, based on the research we've been doing, Emily and I have been working pretty hard on finding this stuff out. It's basically uh, a common threat, you know, since 1886 when they first decided they were going to establish a fire department in the village. Um, time after time, the last names of people repeated. Potts, Simmons, Moores, many others. It's always been a family thing um, that kept it going. And thankfully, these families at Tivoli that love this village have been instrumental in keeping the fire service alive in this small community. Um, like Joel said, this year marks a century of service since our department became incorporated. Um, from the start of the Tivoli Fire Department in 1886, it seems there's always been some sort of dilemma. Um, we've been researching a bunch, and it's very interesting. We're going to write a book. <laughs> uh, from the many father and son disputes of the DePeisters um, to one of the fire departments actually leaving the fireman's hall and setting up shop in the local saloon. <laughs> Um, at that time, the village was actually going to disband them um, if they didn't come back to the village hall because they hung their signs and everything like that. <laughs> um, finally, in 1919, the village abolished all three departments, and our department was created um, and incorporated into one department. Um, over the past hundred years, we've faced a lot of ups and downs. You know, we've experienced tragedies nobody should ever see. Yet our departments always seem to overcome every obstacle that's been thrown at us. Um, we've seen the department, this department grow slowly into the department we have today. In 1886, like I said, they started with a steamer company, a hook and ladder, and a hose cart. That's basically how they fought all the fires until they got their first motorized truck in 1925. Um, today, we run a lot more equipment. We have two engines, the ambulance, we have a boat which we do a lot of rescues on the river, believe it or not. Um, probably outweighs the structure fires we run to. Uh, we have a utility vehicle to service Tivoli Bays, railroad tracks, um, as well as a special operations trail now for larger incidents, long-term incidents, um, where we need to basically just set up command centers. Um, our fire hall services, uh, the community and shelters, it's a, you know, basically a community shelter in time of natural disasters. Um, and we've done that many, many times. Our call volume, we actually found record books, uh, about four calls in 1922. We average right now, just for our small department, about 300. We wave range from about, we've run as many as 350 the past couple years. It's slowed down a little bit. But it's quite a lot for our small department. Um, so the Tilly Fire Department is made up of some of the best equipment you'll find in this village. I'm thankful to say that the fire department is growing. It's not shrinking like many of the other volunteer fire departments in this country. Uh, we have a large group of young members that are eager to come to calls, train, as well as a strong group of seasoned veterans that are always there to help mentor. Um, the residents of this village in Red Hook and Tivoli should sleep easy at night knowing that they have the finest men and women of this company hard work keeping them safe. So as Joel said, our 100th anniversary is this year. Uh, we teamed up with Red Hook Fire Company because it just so happens in 1919 they became incorporated also. So we're just going to make it one big party. Uh, we'll be hosting one of the largest parades both towns have basically have seen in a very long time. The Dutchess County Convention has actually been secured. That's going to be in the, town, in the village of Red Hook and the town of Red Hook. We'll run through both of them. Uh, so Friday night, August 16th, it's going to be a car show, food vendors, bounce houses. Basically, they'll come through the village and at the Red Oak Firehouse and have a party that night. Uh, August 17th is when the parade will happen. It actually starts at 5 p.m. in the evening. It'll start at the high school. It'll come up by the memorial. 
come march all the way through the center of Red Hook down to the Red Hook Firehouse. And again, the bounce houses, there'll be multiple, multiple food vendors, food trucks, fireworks, um, one big party. Um, we're going to be actually having a roast beef barbecue, I figured I'd mention this, on April 27th at the Red Hook Firehouse. Um, this is basically to help raise proceeds to pay for the day, fireworks and everything else. We're trying to do this without having to use the fire department's budgets on either side and try to raise money. So if anybody's interested, see one of the fire department guys. If you know him, if not, catch me or find him. He knows where to find me. That's true. <coughs> so in closing, I'd like to add that we're always looking for members. Um, there's a great group of men and women over there, but there's never enough. Um, and it, we always need, it can go from administrative duties uh, that need to be done, as well as firefighters, EMTs, fire police, ambulance drivers, anything. Um, so if you're interested in joining, like I said, a lot of it's family, but a lot of it's not. Um, if you're interested in joining, helping out, whatever it may be, um, you can see me, stop down the firehouse any given Monday night, we are literally there every Monday night, seven o'clock. Whether it's a holiday, if it, we take off Christmas and New Year's. Otherwise, we're there. Um, so again, thank you all for supporting us. Thank you to Bill's board for supporting us, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. seem as responsible and responsive as we'd like. 
I wish I could say as we deserve, but if half of us don't vote, then maybe we get what we deserve. So please, never think that in Tivoli's uncontested elections, your vote does not matter. It does. It matters to you. It matters to us. It matters to the strength of self-government in our village. In our election last month, we saw a change on the village board. Trustee Chris Murphy finished his term, and I would like us all to thank him right now for the two plus I'll miss you very much on the board, but I know how to get to Red Oak and we'll be in touch. So. <laughs> and uh, Tivoli, I think um, we should give another welcome to the village board, to Angela Cole, who's going to do a great job. recently, and I didn't look for these, they just, I caught them on the radio over the last couple weeks, and uh, if you take all the seats in the state legislatures across the country, women hold 28% of those seats. In the U.S. House, it's about 25%, and in the Senate, it's 23%, and that's very recent. I mean, that's like in the last couple election cycles. Well, on the Tivoli Village Board of Trustees, women hold 80%. <laughs> Genius, just not here tonight. So, um, you know, draw your own conclusions. I am grateful to be returned to the mayor's desk because from there I'm able to do more good work for Tivoli. But I'm well aware that the mayor and Masood were on the same wavelength because this is my image as well. The mayor is the tip of an iceberg. And if I and my work did not rest on this mighty iceberg, I'd be just a tiny ice cube, small, <laughs> ineffective, and short to melt away in short order. So I would like to thank the rest of our mighty iceberg. Um, everyone who works in Tivoli, whether you are elected, appointed, employed, and especially if you volunteer, the board, office staff, DPW, consultants, various boards, and committee members, I won't go through the list name by name, but you know who you are, I know who you are, and I appreciate what you do. We all, it takes all of us to move the village forward. So let's have a round of applause for everyone who works with this. supportive work environment where together we take care of people's business and we manage to enjoy ourselves and have some walk laughs as we do. It is always a pleasure to come into this building, this amazing building, and tackle the day's business with you. To be clear, the business isn't always a pleasure. Sometimes it's a royal pain in the asparagus, but those of you who work for and with the village truly are a pleasure and I thank you. Tivoli has traveled far in recent years. But it's not just the distance we've traveled, it's also, importantly, the direction. Tivoli has been marching confidently, eyes open, strides sure, head tall, towards its goals, towards a better future. We face our challenges, steadily surmount them, and we keep moving forward. I've got three little pictures to paint for you to illustrate this. Three vignettes of what this village can do and how we do it. They are depictions of actual projects. Hey, Pete. Glad to meet you, they're depictions of actual projects, but also each is a metaphor for what I'm talking about, striving towards our goals patiently, purposefully, successfully. The first picture is of this building. It is on the National Register of Historic Places, the only structure in the village to bear that distinction. It was restored and turned into Village Hall in 1994, but by 2015, after over two decades, it was getting a little beat, because we make good use of our wonderful Watts de Peister. So the board went at it, bit by bit, year by year, but we could afford. In 2015, we replaced the front steps and rail. We painted, we painted the bathroom. Um, in 16, we fixed the walls, all the cracks, and painted the walls in the uh, clerk's office and courtroom. In 17, the mayor's office and zoning office. And this year, uh, excuse me, 
in 2018, we did the hallways on three floors, 17 or 18. And this year, like last week, uh, we just finished this room. So uh, this building this year, um, there's one last thing that we need to do inside this building. So help me, I promise, this year, on the first and second floor, new carpets. <laughs> That's for Michelle, too, the back there. <laughs> um, and the interior of our Wasta Peister Hall will finally be in handsome repair and worthy of the citizens of Tivoli. Now, it's a five, six-year effort, but we are there. Second picture. The board has been working on another vision that goes back to at least 2013. A good, repaired, broad, clear, uncluttered sidewalk from the laundromat to Clay Hill Road. 100 feet were done in 2013. 180 in two, uh, 2016. Overgrown hedges were pulled out. 120 feet along with the bridge in 17, 260 feet in 18, and as you have seen driving in on Broadway, it was finished yesterday, we did the last 200 feet, we made it to Clay Hill Road. Um, another steady, systematic success, a six-year effort. And my third picture is our biggest and greatest, but it was handled in the same fashion. Frame the vision, see the goal, work your way to it. Water and sewer. In 2014, Tivoli applied for a grant to evaluate the condition of the systems. In 2015, we won that $85,000 grant. In 2016, completed the evaluation. 2017, we reviewed and responded to the reports and held community discussions to weigh the decision whether or not to transfer to the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority. In 2018, we held community discussions to locate and design the next water tower. And later in 2018, we applied for and won $3.8 million in state funding to pay for much of what these systems need. That is $3.8 million that is not going to come out of our bills. This summer, by July or August, the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority will take over operation and maintenance of our water and sewer systems. The June water bill will be the last that comes from the village. The September billing will come from the DCWWA. Throughout this summer, final engineering is being done on the new water tower. It will go out to bid in late fall, early winter. Ground will break next spring, and by late fall 2020, Tivoli's new water tower will be standing. Repairs to the rest of the water and sewer systems underway. After decades, there is a plan to address and resolve Tivoli's aging infrastructure, and it will be executed Again, strategic, systematic, successful. I could have picked any number of other projects, other paths of progress that have been unfolding in our village this year. And they would have showed the same process, typically moving forward, incremental, but inexorable. Our village authoring its own success. While we execute many physical projects, repair sidewalks, maintain a building, organize fun stuff like the egg hunt, which is going to be this Saturday, uh, street painting, winter fest, there is ultimately only one project that we work on here in Tivoli. One project in which all the other projects culminate, and that project is community. Community is a project, just like a physical one. It needs maintenance, it needs investment. It needs to be cared for, it needs to be named, overtly, cultivated intentionally, and celebrated regularly, which we're pretty good at. <laughs> if so, it flourishes. If not, it withers. Community doesn't just happen. It has to be chosen, constructed, and maintained. And if you think community is a silly, schmaltzy, Pollyanna abstraction, I invite you to think about the state of our nation today. Increasingly fragmented, polarized, intolerant, impatient, differences of identity and political persuasion are becoming clannish badges which divide us from one another, leading to alienation between those who are, in fact, fellow citizens. So many labels are being flung around, uh, you know, embraced by this side, hurled at that side, and the one label that matters most is getting lost. That label is fellow American citizen. When I look out at our nation, when we look out at our nation, we can see what the weakening of community looks like. Community is real and it matters. We are so fortunate in Tivoli. Our community project is healthy and it has many champions. So many residents work to contribute to the project. And yes, I know it's easier on a smaller scale, 
but we still can't take it for granted. Community doesn't mean we're all mushed together, nor does unity mean a bland conformity, nor does it mean we agree on everything. I don't think this village will ever be in danger of a homogeneity of opinion. <laughs> Tivoli, we all agree on everything. You know, we can laugh at that because we are that community. That's exactly why we can laugh, because we all identify with this village. We are people with a common interest living in a particular place, and we are further fortunate because the foundations of our community were laid before we got here, and we didn't have to create all this from scratch. Others before us got this community built and going, and I've been thinking about it a lot this year, and so the rest of my remarks are sort of about that. We are now living in a Tivoli without Margaret Lemon, without Claude Potts. You know, we must be glad that exactly two years ago tonight, she was sitting right there in 2017. We surprised Margaret with the Citizen of the Year. And uh, Jackie Zacko helped because she snuck her in here and got her hair done that day, and Margaret had no idea. <laughs> we were also able to honor Claude Potts while he was still with us, dedicating this stretch of Broadway, Claude Potts Way, and he helped cut the ribbon himself. We've lost others recently from that earlier generation, Charlie Kuhn, Barry Koblinski, Kolbinski, excuse me, Mayor Ed Mead. All of these people and their generation works to maintain and perpetuate a community which has come to us. Claude and Margaret and people like them were humble, decent, hardworking, and committed to their community. When I was six, seven, eight years old and bobbing for apples at the uh, old Harris Smith post here, and we don't get to bob for apples with the kids anymore. That was like another era of you know, <laughs> shared germs and stuff. <laughs> Made us strong. I don't know. I'm still here. Margaret Lemon was there overseeing the kids. I mean, that's literally the first time I saw Margaret, I was like coming up with an apple like that. <laughs> We're crying because I did more like that. Right? And Claude Potts was driving buses for the Tivoli School District, like the buses that uh, Mark and I were riding there. You know, through the narrow and, and short-seeing eyes of childhood, you know, I had to take all that for granted. You know, grown-ups are just there. They just do things for kids. And, you know, the Halloween costume contest and the egg hunts and the wreck, they just happen, you know. But later, now that I'm an adult, and through the eyes of experience, and I'm also the mayor, and I know just how much work goes into an egg hunt or the Tivoli wreck program, um, I have such a deep appreciation for people like Margaret and Claude and all the older generation who did those things for their fellow Tivolians and, and for little kids in the village, you know? Um, they gave their time and they gave themselves to their fellow villagers and this is very humbling and it's wonderfully instructive. Now we have lost Margaret, Claude and others and we, while we were lucky to thank them while, uh, and honor them while they were still with us, we could not and we cannot repay them. They and their generation gave us this wonderful Tivoli worth protecting and nurturing. So what does that tell us? This is where it's instructive because I think it's obvious that our task, our duty is to take our turn at preserving and perpetuating the community through our generation to the next. As they left us this wonderful, charming, and authentic village, we are going to use our time to keep it that way and leave it that way for those who are coming up and coming after. A living, yes. A living community like Tivoli is a book. It's a story. And as time turns the pages, while the characters come and go, and the plot leads along, the theme of the story remains the same, community. I believe Tivoli's story of community is its greatest strength. It is what sets us apart. We must protect that community. We must nurture it and grow it. And we must and we will continue to pass it on. Thank you very much.
two payrolls were processed. 413 trash tags were sold. And the deputy clerk attended a planning board meeting and workshop. And attorney <coughs> Paul had mentioned that it's at some point that I'm supposed to provide what I do. I figure it's late, but I should do it now at the beginning of another term. Seems um, like the right time to. So being that it's the reorg, beginning a new term, where it's a good idea to mention the accomplishments with other organizations within the village. So I haven't here uh, noted the firehouse I did join last year in the spring, took and passed 24 hour classroom practical exams, and a member of the fire police for the fire department, along with Mr. Chrissy. Nominated and accepted the nomination to become the department's new corresponding secretary. Participated in trainings, drills, events, the yard sale day, chicken barbecue, and breakfast. It's an honor and a pleasure to be a part of that department. And uh, April 5th, the dinner, which was absolutely lovely. Um, I hope that everyone will enjoy themselves there. I'm still a member of the Board of Trustees for the Tivoli Free Library. Fantastic group, consistently offering activities for all ages, and the latest and the greatest was the baby goats. Um, still Board of Directors for Provost Park. Barbara Jeck is really, she's wonderful to work with. Um, the residents are in good hands with her and with our board of directors at Rivers. Um, steadily looking to become more involved uh, in, at St. Paul's, especially too because of the Northern Duchess Community Coalition, my affiliation with them, the opioid epidemic, and um, so having all three with the church, the fire department, and the Northern Duchess. Um, so, I will continue to um, move forward with, within all three of those. And um, it's sort of on a personal note, but the Spanish class with Treasurer Day, so we can hopefully expand at some point as we get much better with the, with the language, with the skills. Um, having Spanish in the office probably would be great. Um, so, but that sums up my village involvement, and the rest is just my own personal stuff. So there we have it. Thank There's you, Bert. Wow. Thank you. Okay, uh, trustees, we have uh, three sets of minutes. We have... Um, Actually, there are four because of the addition that we have today. Right. All right, so we have the regular board meeting minutes from March 20th. We have uh, public hearing minutes from the uh, repeal of Chapter 71, Smoking, and providing for the amendment of Chapter 151, Parks Regarding Smoking, Vaping, and Use of E-Cigarettes. We have uh, public hearing minutes on the tentative budget, and we have workshop minutes from April 10th in which we did Resolution 83, the consistency determination for the LWRP related to St. Sylvia's and what the town is doing. So, trustees, we have four sets of minutes. You've had a chance to review these. I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are accepted. Um, Moving on to a treasurer's report. Thank Treasurer Day. Uh, <clears throat> this month, out of the general fund, we spent twenty-six thousand five ninety-one forty-five. Out of the water fund, five thousand two hundred ninety-three dollars and seventy-eight cents, and the sewer fund, two thousand thirty-one dollars and sixty-eight cents, for a grand total of thirty-three thousand nine hundred sixteen and eighty-four cents. Uh, is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Uh, Second. Okay, that was Cole followed by Ezrati. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to pay the bills? So moved. That was uh, Ezrati followed by Major. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bills will be paid. Uh, we have a zoning report from Mr. Yes. Fenton. Mr. Fenton has reported that he has um, reviewed and issued two building permits, um, performed three building inspections, um, 
investigated and submitted, uh, he's had submitted to him two complaints and investigated both of them. Um, he's issued one zoning violation for a failure to remove garbage can. That number is way down from earlier this year. And uh, there were no municipal searches this month, nor any fire inspections scheduled to date. But I understand that's coming up soon. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Azrati. Um, we will now entertain public comment on agenda items only. You see we have eight agenda items. It's quite a bit. Um, is there any public comment on any agenda item? And of course, you get a chance to comment again a little later in the meeting, but I'd okay. like to do so before we vote. Okay, we'll jump right in. Uh, regular business. Um, so this adoption of the reorg package, we can just do by motion, is that right? So trustees, you've all been uh, holding that New York package for the last hour or so. Is there a motion to adopt the 2019-2020 uh, New York package? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, just to comment that it's nice that we've refreshed the actual duty roster, yes. made it more meaningful to the people who are doing it. and. Uh, uh, not a bad idea to do that from time to time, so yeah. I agree. Thank you for acknowledging that. Um, any further discussion? I'll just thank everyone who serves on our planning board, zoning board, um, all the committees. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it does take a village, so we appreciate them, willing, their willingness to volunteer to serve. Uh, was that all in favor? Aye. 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 And the reorg package is adopted. Moving on to resolution for the uh, relating to annual reorganization. Yeah, that cake is strong. Right. I don't need a lot of sugar. Thank you. Can't eat all the cereal in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we have resolution relating to the annual reorg. So this contains our meeting dates, which are going to remain unchanged, second and third Wednesdays, uh, 7 o'clock on the second for the workshop, 6 p.m. on the third for the workshop, followed by at 7 o'clock for the regular meeting. The newspaper continues to be Kingston Freeman. Uh, our bank will be M&T. Uh, petty cash on hand. Uh, we will leave $100 there. And are we, did we double check that mileage rate? Are we good on the mileage rate? Uh, I, it was, yes, we, we spoke. So the mileage rate is, uh, I believe it's, it could be 58. It could be as high as 58, but that's the maximum. Okay. Uh, is there any reason why we shouldn't make it 58 instead of 57? That, that, that was in the email, right? Okay. I mean, I move that we amend this to the uh, mileage reimbursement rate of 0.58 dollars. Uh, Trustee Azrati has motioned that it be five point or zero zero point five eight. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we all just agreed to change that to five point eight. Um, and uh, let's see. We've got the blanket bond in here, and we've got our check signers: clerk, treasurer, uh, mayor, and in my absence, deputy mayor. Uh, all right. So that's our annual. Yes. Is there a motion uh, to resolve to adopt this uh, reorg? Uh, all right. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does this need to be a roll call? Uh, we can do that, sure. Uh, Deputy Mayor Major? Aye. Trustee Azari? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. And uh, obviously Trustee Schneider is absent, and I vote aye. Yeah, resolution, re-adoption of the Code of Ethics. So trustees, um, the Code of Ethics are in here, and um, read them carefully. Uh, we're obviously uh, all to follow them and happy to do so. So uh, with that, is there a, uh, excuse me, a motion relating to the re-adoption re of the Code of Ethics? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And roll call, Deputy Mayor Major. Trustee Azrati? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. And I also vote aye. That's our code of ethics. Okay. 
Okay, budget mods. Uh, there are lots of these, and we didn't workshop tonight, so I will just go quickly through them. Uh, part of what's going on here is we've got one month left in our fiscal year, so it's really lines are getting tight when they're tight. We're tidying up. Um, the big thing here is uh, in the water fund, um, uh, we're taking 10000 out of the contingency to cover attorney, engineering, and source and supply costs. Um, and the big one in the um, fire department. Okay, so you'll see that 29650 in the second grid there. Yep. So that's the town paying for half of our new chief's field. Uh, so we're increasing our fire department line, obviously, to receive that uh, generous and appreciated contribution. And um, you know, the rest of the A fund stuff is pretty uh, you know, house, housekeeping. The big thing here is, you know, we so in this set of budget mods, we're wiping out our the rest of the contingency for this year. And in fact, I even went into buildings for four hundred and forty nine dollars, which. Building right. still has about seven thousand in it, mm -hmm. so uh, if, as we have more bot, more mods next month, uh, we won't be having any contingency. So we we'll really have to start going into the different lines. Uh, yeah, and that's moving the rescue squad funds into the TFC administration. Same thing. Yep. Yep. All right. So with that uh, quick explanation, is there a motion to adopt the budget mods? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion or questions from the board? Yeah. Okay, um, Deputy Mayor Major. This is a roll call vote. Oh, aye. Uh, Trustee Azrati. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. And I also vote aye. Budget bonds are adopted. Next, we have an annual um, chore review here uh, establishing unpaid water sewer rent liens. Whereas the Board of Trustees requires a fee for the use of the village's water sewer system, and the following individuals have not paid the required fees, you'll see the accompanying list. There, uh, the total amount is $23,150.94. And we establish these and uh, goes on their taxes, correct? Well, they have, um, anyone could pay till um, May 1st. That's when Jason from SCA and I will do the relay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, is there a motion to um, establish the unpaid water sewer rent liens? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Major? Aye. Trustee Azrati? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. I also vote aye. Resolution is adopted. Uh, number six, resolution authorizing expenditure of $25,161.88 from the Fire Department Capital Reserve Fund for the acquisition of a 2019 Chevrolet Tahoe for use by the Fire Department subject to permissive referendum. This uh, is the total amount that's been in the fire reserve fund that we set up about two, two budget years ago. Um, any unfund, uh, unspent funds in the fire lines uh, go into that reserve fund. That's what's happened for the last two years, which is how we got to the 25,000. And after uh, speaking with the, excuse me, <clears throat> speaking with the fire uh, company, uh, they're okay with us spending this towards the new chief's vehicle, and obviously we got half of it from the town. So, um, and Mr. Mayor, if I yes. just comment on the process. So yes. when you set up a reserve fund, you can either set up a reserve fund for a <coughs> specific purpose and do a permissive referendum at the time you set it up, and then you can put money in up to the amount that you established in that resolution. Or you can set up a resolution just with a resolution, set up a reserve for a general purpose, like fire purposes. <clears throat> and then when you take the money out, it's subject to a permissive referendum. So what's the term of the permissive referendum? It's the same 30, right? 30. The regular process, <clears throat> right. All right, is there a motion to authorize the expenditure out of the uh, fire reserve fund? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And that was um, Cole followed by Azrani. Any further discussion? Deputy Mayor Major? Aye. Trustee Azrani? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. And I also vote aye. Resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Next we have the uh, authorizing adoption by the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Tivoli Local Law A proposed of 2019 as Local Law 1 of 2019. And this is repealing 
There's no repeal, right? Repealing Chapter 71, smoking, and providing for the amendment of Chapter 151, parks regarding smoking, vaping, and the use of e-cigarettes. We had our public hearing on this last week. Uh, I was not surprised nobody came because it's not very controversial. Tilly had a very old, so old smoking law about, you know, well, you can smoke in this part of Village Hall, but not that part of Village Hall. Like, that's how old it was. And, you know, county and state smoking rules have long superseded, superseded. that. Yeah. yeah. So let's take it off the books. And then while we're doing it, we're going to add uh, vaping and e-cigarettes to the prohibition at our park, uh, along with traditional cigarettes. So uh, with that explanation, is there a motion to adopt the resolution uh, as described? Um, is there a second? Second. Okay, that was uh, the Deputy Mayor followed by Trustee Cole. Any further discussion? We'll call vote. Deputy Mayor Major. Aye. Trustee Azrati. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. And I also vote aye. Next we have uh, the last one, number eight. Resolution adopt adopting the 2019-2020 operating budget. Uh, trustees, we've reviewed this uh, last week we had our public hearing and we also went into workshop and went over it uh, in great detail uh, i think we're all happy with it i think it's a good budget and as we know you know it's all about how much do you start with and where you put it in which budget line as uh, we do we move things back and forth and it's all about that that first number so um is there a motion to adopt the 2019 2020 operating budget so moved is there a second second is there any further discussion no. Okay. Well, just as a sure. So um, I've got here the increases over the last number of years, and uh, once again, we're going to stay under the tax cap. We are increasing taxes this year. Um, things driving that need are. Uh, the ever-increasing problem of uh, health coverage, uh, which is not being resolved in America and is crunching little municipalities with these 10% increases we're seeing every year. And the other uh, nuance to, that's driving the increase this year is the village has an A fund, general fund, F fund, water fund, G fund, sewer fund. But as we transfer to the Water and Wastewater Authority, the F and G funds go away. We have <coughs> salaries uh, split across the funds currently, and we need to get those salaries back all into the general fund. Um, so we are making that move this year. And the, the, those salaries, we're, we're not just moving the salaries, we're actually moving the activity to, so the billing and the uh, monitoring of uh, water and sewer and so forth is going to the, the Dutchess County Wastewater Authority, which means that the individuals that we have hired in the clerk and the assistant clerk and the treasurer's position no longer were actually, are actually contributing to those funds, so we can't take our salaries out of them. Well said, exactly. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, roll call vote please. Deputy Mayor Major? Aye. Trustee Azrati? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. And I also vote aye. Resolution? passes and the budget is adopted for the coming fiscal year. Uh, the next board meeting will be held Wednesday, May 15th at 7 p.m., preceded by a workshop at 6 p.m. And uh, trustees, we're going to have uh, Brandy Nelson of Time Bond come to that uh, and tell us about the LWRP uh, update, uh, the $50,000 grant we got. Uh, so <coughs> she'll be there. We'll be talking LWRP at the workshop along with, I'm sure, many other things. And at the regular meeting on the 15th, so Ms. Nelson's coming on the 8th, on the 15th we're gonna have a school board, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so the school board will come and tell us, as they do every year, uh, what's happening with the school budget. And um, moving on to trustee reports. Trustee Azrati, please. Okay, uh, the usual well report. Um, which we'll still be doing. Uh, somebody else will be monitoring the routes, but the ball lot well has been off most of the year um, due to the fact that it isn't one of our most producing wells, and 
it, it, it is in a spot where it may actually be closed when we move the water tower. The McKnight well has been producing at just about 10,400 gallons a day. The two, two Potts West well is producing a little bit more at 10.8, and uh, the five PW well has been off most weekends and otherwise producing at about 11,000 gallons a day. The 4PE and 10PE wells, which are counted together, are producing just under 19,000 gallons a day. And um, the, wow, look at that. The production <laughs> of the Woodmark well has moved up from 23,000 at the beginning of the month to 28.5. I haven't seen that number in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like that well is um, more productive than it has been recently. Um, believe it or not, in March we were still counting snow. Um, so we don't actually have an actual come on <laughs> <laughs> listing of the amount of precipitation. But if my yard is any indication, um, the water is just three inches below. The <laughs> I don't know if you just guess a depth of mud. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to change the measurement. It's true. Um, we need a winter version of the contest. It's <laughs> still play. Yeah. And am I correct, Mr. Mayor, we did not have any water main breaks? Correct. Okay. Although we had a pump that failed in one of the pots wells. Um, uh, it's about a $500 item in June about it today. Okay. Okay, but that's in April, not in March, right? Right. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank um, you. And the water was tested. Great. Thank you, Trustee Uh Trustee Schneider's not here tonight. I'll read the uh, Justice Court report. Tilly Village Court, charge volume summary report. All judges, charges from March 1st to March 31st, 2019. Total charges received six. Total charges disposed 22. Total monies collected and remitted to the state controller in fines 1,608. Surcharges 1,168. No civil fees for a total of 2,776. I'm very excited, again, to have uh, our new trustee, Angela Cole, and uh, tell us a little bit about your domains there. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I'm very excited and honored to be part of, of serving the village and uh, look forward to, to a great term in working with you and for our citizens. Um, I'll be working with our senior and veterans affairs and look forward to uh, talking with our veterans and finding out what they need and what we can do to support them. I look forward uh, to working with planning and zoning, very critical issues in our village, uh, and then uh, working with our business owners and citizens as part of economic development uh, as we look to move forward in the village. So an exciting time, a full plate, and I uh, can't wait to get started. Great. Thank you very much, Angela. Uh, Deputy Mayor Major. Well, I guess I'd like to start by uh, saying we missed you all at the Tibbley's Got Talent talent show. Mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing. <coughs> there is so much talent around here. Um, and so I want to say thank you to everybody that got up there and performed. Uh, it takes a lot of guts. And uh, thank you to Murray's, to Jake and Jesse, as always, for you know letting, letting the building the library use their fantastic venue. Um, thank you to all of the restaurants that contributed uh, delicious things. I and mean, literally all of the restaurants did. It was it was Rojo and Osaka and. Uh, Santa Fe and Broadway and the corner and the bakery. Did I leave out? I think that's it. But it was it was fantastic. So uh, I look forward to it again next year. Um, coming up uh, tomorrow. Clear your calendars because it's Baby Goats at the library. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there was a preview the other day. Available. As Robin can attest, they are also very snuggly. <laughs> Uh, he fell asleep and went out of the What's better than that? Nothing. Um, uh, the egg hunt. Annual egg hunt. We have uh, a bunny. We have a, a bunny coming back for the third year in a row. So this is very exciting. We have a pro. Uh, two to three on Saturday. 
And what I am super excited about this year is compostable Easter eggs. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. Look like plastic, are not plastic. Awesome. Um, May 10th is the uh, Bard Community uh, Center for Civic Engagement and Tivoli Potluck, which is going to be which here. Which uh, Friday, May 10th. Sorry, Joel. Uh, and I think we're starting at 6 o'clock, like we did last <coughs> year. So, uh, please come out. These events have really taken off and become something special. I think we had about uh, 80 people at the last one. and That's terrific. That's, you know, pretty massive. Right here. Right here. Right here. I gotta get yeah. out of work. Awesome. All right. Right. Get your priorities straight, would you? <laughs> um, and uh, Tivoli Bay is still no word on the canoe launch, um, but the ticks are out and they are wily and hungry and Disgusting. So, uh, dress appropriately. Check yourselves. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, for starters, I just want to say that I had a lot of fun at that reorg, and uh, it's because we got a great crowd. Um, you know, it's just amazing to see how residents invested. It's what makes serving work at all, and and worth it for us. And I know that you. You all know the rewards that, that we get to enjoy from doing that kind of work, and uh, that was just great. So, great. thanks to everyone who came. Um, let's see. We've got the egg hunt next Saturday, and the Saturday after that, April 27th, will be uh, our fourth annual Arbor Day. And we're going to do it a little differently this year. The last few years we've been out at the gazebo <coughs> with an ongoing thing. This year, it's Go to Madeline Court. It's a chance to ex expand your Tivoli geography. Uh, Madeline Court is a little court. It's a round road over in the development. And um, many people have never been there, I've learned recently. So that's where it is. And it's a chance to see the other side of Tivoli. And in Madeline Court, um, we're going to plant a dogwood. And we're doing it at noon. So come at noon. If you come at noon 20, Tree's gonna be in the ground. <laughs> um, there will be uh, some activities uh, with the library. Uh, there's uh, something I've learned called a tree cookie, which is when you take a slice of the branch, and there are little ones you can decorate. And of course, uh, we're also gonna have a monstrous tree cookie and some kind of contest involved in ring counting. Um, okay. <laughs> and then we also have our annual poster contest. Uh, and if you've seen the Arbor Day poster for this year, it's at Arbor Da but it was not a misprint like cut off. Like our young artist didn't put a Y on it. Um, and it was just that cute that we had to use it anyway. So, uh, and I want to thank it's Laura. It's a long A. It's a long A. It's a day. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so come plant a tree with us on Saturday the 27th at noon over at Madeline Court. Um, while we're on growing things, uh, Tivoli's 4,000 daffodils are coming up and bursting out as we speak, and uh, I've already identified where uh, I would like to take the daffodils next year. Seeing our line on Broadway, uh, we could continue that another 80, 100 feet, yes, finish that whole really strip. Uh, okay. And also, since last week we talked about pulling those bushes out on Memorial, uh, I could see doing that whole path coming into the park from Memorial Drive would be a lovely spot. So uh, another thousand next fall, and I hope you'll be there as you always are. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, on the 18th of May, big day in Tivoli, it is not only the second annual Shred Day, a joint operation by the Village and the Tivoli Free Library where a big shredder comes in and parks in the parking lot and you can bring all your Secrets. secret oh. documents <laughs> and um, shred away. So that will be going on and um, I don't have the time for that, but I think it's sort of an all day thing. Also on the 18th of May, we're doing um, a long composting workshop. It starts in this room at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to be from Tivoli or anything. Um, Tivoli won a community composting grant uh, for about a thousand bucks. We're in a grant that involves communities in seven states. And um, a composting expert um, associated with that grant named Athena Lee Bradley is coming to Tivoli from Vermont. And she's going to lead an uh, in-depth composting workshop here from 10 to noon. Then we're going to go over to the community garden and assemble our new Jorah 
Tumblr, which is a fancy, beautiful, Swedish tumbling um, composter. Some assembly required, so uh, <laughs> hopefully we can follow the instructions. And um, we're kind of she's going to tell us how to sort of better set up the composting arrangement behind the garden. Um, Good. So that is also going on. So shred your paper and come up here and we'll help you figure out what to do with your kitchen scraps. So composting day and shred day on the 18th. Um, there's lots of construction that's already started. So we just finished our, another 200 feet on, Clay, uh, on Broadway sidewalk up to Clay Hill. That's finished. Um, and very soon we are going to be working on Broadway in two locations. This is the Broadway water line project that unfortunately was not finished before the asphalt plants closed last winter. So one of those is in front of St. Sylvia's Church. Um, for almost the entire project, one lane will be open, but there may be an afternoon when both lanes are closed for a time. Uh, we'll try and give you as much notification about that as we can. Uh, so we have to put a six inch main all the way across Broadway there. Then what we had gotten done but not finished uh, last winter was in front of uh, Faro Avenue. Um, we need to take that asphalt patch out uh, do deeper uh, concrete and uh, make the county happy, right. then we can pave that as well. So two places of construction on Broadway. Uh, and the St. Sylvia's location uh, <coughs> is going to begin Monday, so that's like the 21st. Um, and uh, Pine Street Phase 2 Community Development Block Grant, uh, we had the bid meeting on Monday. And uh, we had, I think, four or five contractors come. Uh, it's a nice big bunch of work, so I think people are interested. And um, you know, shortly we'll have those bids in, and we can take a look. And so once we have them, we'll give them the to proceed. And sometime this late spring, we'll be doing new sidewalk on Pine Street on the south side from opposite the bus stop all the way to North Road. And those aprons at the parking lots that are always horrendous, like behind the schoolhouse. Um, there's going to be a bioswale, which is a nice drainage uh, feature um, that's, that's going to be river stone with plantings and let the water kind of seep in instead of just rush off into the storm drain. And um, so that's coming as well. Uh, as our Victory Award winner, um, Ari, said, uh, we are signing up for the Tivoli Rec Camp. Um, I expect to have the forms ready to be picked up or viewed on the website by Monday. Um, Two weeks in August, it's something like 25 for a Tivoli kid. It's slightly less for a sibling. And I think if you're from outside Tivoli, it's, it's 30 or 35 or something like that. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We might have a hose there. We'll see. Um, so that's registration for, the, uh, for that. And <coughs> I get everything. Well, spring is here. It's getting nice out. And I just want to remind everyone that Tivoli has a village noise ordinance. It's 10 o'clock. And, uh, you know, we're all excited for the good weather, but that doesn't mean we can disturb our neighbors. And if you are bothered or disturbed by, uh, you know, disrupted noise after 10 p.m., you are to call the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office, and their number is 845-486-3800, and let them know that you've got a complaint. They'll look into it. So, uh, with that said, yes? I forgot one thing. Take it. Uh, so May 4th, which is a Saturday, it's the, I believe it's the 6th annual uh, Riverkeeper uh, River Sweep. So communities up and down the Hudson uh, uh, clean together sure. and pick up garbage, clean the shoreline. And um, this year again, we've done it uh, in the bays, we did it in the bays for a few years, and it was amazing. We hauled so much garbage away, and the bays are actually pretty clean right now. So, uh, we'll be down at the riverfront again uh, this year. I believe starting at 9 o'clock. Great. Wonderful. And maybe Susan wants to announce one other thing on May 11th, perhaps? Oh, yes. <laughs> Apple Blossom Day will be taking place in Red Hook. Um, maybe it's an annual event. Uh, it is sponsored by the Rotary Organization. Um, who will be selling hot dogs and uh, showing shelter boxes as they always do. It's a good place to pick up Mother's Day gifts and um, other uh, crafts and so forth uh, by people in the neighboring community. So come early, stay late. <laughs> so uh, at this time, we don't like to open the floor to uh, any public comment.
Mr. Christie. There you go. Let me start here. Um, is the board ever going to get around to uh, enacting a law or something on open burning in the village itself? Open what? Would you open like burning. To, no would burning you like to in the village. What you're, what you're proposing, and we can talk yeah. about this. Yeah. Tell us about what there is or isn't now, and what you think would be best. Uh, well, well, right now, there's um, DEC, according to DEC law, uh, the people can have a campfire. Um, they can, it can be no bigger than, I believe it's three foot three, by whatever, by four. whatever, and four foot high or whatever, yeah. whatever. Being that the village, that these old structures are too close to each other, and from our, our, my observation of people having these campfires in their backyards and stuff, um, is a good possibility one of these days there's going to be a structure fire. Um, I, I'd like to see it completely no burning, which village law can supersede DEC law as long as, the, as long as you guys come up with your whatever the law is that you want to do. Uh, as far as burning, you know, at, right now at this time of year you can't burn at all. But some people, you know, they say, well, we can have a campfire. Uh, you know, and, and, it, and it's a gray area because you can't burn now, and, and, and we get, and there are issues with people burning. I've, I've stopped three people already, um, and one was a farmer who said, I can legally burn, and I says, you may be able to legally burn, but I have to check with DEC, so I had called them, and DEC says, as long as it's an operating farm, they're exempt from the law. But then again, if there's a burn ban in effect, there should be no burning, you know. What, they, what, what we want to do with that, that issue on the outside of the village is one thing, but the inside of the village, being the houses are so close, I don't see anybody doing anything. I mean, you shouldn't be burning. Uh, sparks are too close, a lot of pine trees around here. They go up quick. Uh, so I like to see the village board you know, come up and say, hey, you want to cook a hot dog? Do it on a grill. You know, you want to, something like that, because you, you it's, it's just too dangerous around here. All right, so we'll take that up at our next workshop. Yeah, yeah. we'll just have a conversation about this and you know, see what we um, think. Thank like I said, like, there's no, again, also with the no burning, it's illegal in the state of New York for people to burst leaves at any time of the year. It's also illegal for them to have a burn barrel. You can't burn a burn barrel. That's illegal. Um, people just aren't aware that. I got DEC has sent me a bunch of brochures. Like, I think you got one sitting outside in your downstairs where you're meeting room with the garbage can there. Yeah, they sent me a whole pack of that stuff. Um, that's, that's the issue. It's, it's just that a lot of people seem to think they can do what they want when they want. And, and for me to walk up to them and say you can't do it, right. I, I'm not a police officer. I'm just a fire police. But, you know, and, and, and that's the way it goes. There's got to be a little bite into the law. And uh, I've talked to... Uh, the ranger, uh, his name is Lincoln, yep. whatever. Uh, he's told me, he says, anybody gives me a hard time, he gave me a cell number, and he said, just call me and I'll take it from there. Great. So, just so that, that you're aware of yeah, the, of the, we'll, of the we'll, thing. We'll have a conversation about that. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, the other one I got, you know, you guys mentioned the Easter hunt. Um, I guess Saturday's forecast was supposed to be for rain, so. Where are you going to do it if it's raining? That's such a great question. Are you going to hit the firehouse like we did years ago? Right. Yeah, we've got the toddlers downstairs in the library. So we'll have to come up with a plan and make sure. Yeah, you have to come up with a plan. It's going to rain. Yep, right. gotcha. Yeah, okay. Um, I do have rabbits and stuff like that. Excellent. I've got that ready. Um, what else can I tell you about? Water. Uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with you guys. I had Jimmy come over to the house the other day. We have a, a drainage, natural drainage thing that goes from one property to the other property over there. Um, the one spot that I've seen, the first time I've seen in 40 years, it, was, it came up like a real brownish color. Uh, and they, so I had Jimmy come over and look at it. He thought it may be rust of some kind. Um, I called DEC, DEC says it could be natural 
iron coming out of the out of the ground. Uh, that's why I'm getting that color. But there's a, a rainbow sheen on the top of it, so that's not natural iron that's doing it. I took, I got a water sample of it and stuff. I, like I said, I called DEC, and they said unless you know somebody who's been who buried chemicals around, um, then they would come up. And, I said, well, I know of the person who did bury chemicals there. I says, but unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. So I have to take the water sample to Cornell, what do you call and have them tell me what it is, because that is leaching from uh, Eric's old property, huh? across underneath the doctors where he filled in all of his backyard. He filled it in with uh, gravel and stuff. It's leaching under that berm, and it's coming into that where, where it goes to the drainage ditch, and it's going across my property into the to the drainage ditch. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't know what the heck it is. I don't want us to have a big issue if they have to dig that all up. But uh, I have to get a hold of DEC with the, with the water results. But I had, just to let you know, aware that, that there's something funky going on over there. And, you know, so that you're aware of it. And my last question is, where was Wall Street in the village? North Road. Ah, okay. Thank you. That completes our investigation into <laughs> the fire department because they kept saying Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street. Okay. Do we know what it changed? Now we know what Wall Street is. Pretty late. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 like the 19th century, or 20th century rather, like into the 20th century. It, it was it was a real interesting eye opener going through the records of of Tivoli's fire company. Oh, That's great. They, you know, we looked in there where the father and son had their fight and they, they split up. And then I said to Mark, I go, you know, it's a hundred years later, and we still have father and son fighting fighting <laughs> over the control of the fire department. So I said, it, some things don't change. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Tom. All right. We'll talk about this right now. All right, yeah, Good, uh, do that, please. Uh, any other public comments? Well, we've had a, a long evening, a wonderful evening, but a long evening. And uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? No move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're adjourned. Thank Woo. you all.